Hi everybody. As many of you know, I recently began teaching iPad drawing for architects and designers for the UCLA Extension Masters of Interior Design program. And at a recent practice seminar, there were about 15 questions about Procreate that we ran out of time to answer, so I'm posting my answers to this video now. But I'll also add timestamps in the description of the video below, so you can go right to the questions that interest you most. Question number one, how do you make a plan with dimensions in Procreate? I understand that it's not accurate, but how do I at least get it proportional? And in a related question, can you show your process for doing a scale drawing? So to answer both questions, I have uh, two ways that I can do that. Uh, the first is to create a document or start a document by importing a grid template. In this case, I'm going to import, say, a quarter inch grid. And that comes in at 11 by 17 by 300 DPI. And the idea there is to have a document that once you print it out, people can continue to work on it with real world scales. Now you can also add to that, I can insert a, um, a scale. So I can pick this eighth scale file. And then I can move that scale around inside the document. Now there is another way, and that is by going back to the gallery and just starting with a blank document. And this is more the, uh, the intuitive way I would call it. And I usually like to use a kind of a ambiguous brush. I don't use a pencil or a pen line. I use a brush and I'll come in here and I'll start sort of messing around in a super loose way. Uh, you'll come in and you, you roughly know that this is 12 feet maybe and this is 18 feet or something and you don't have to get it right you just eyeball it and then you know that in a 12 foot maybe a 6 foot sofa takes up this much and in a side chair takes up this much maybe there's a coffee table and it's all based on uh, real world experience that you've had but you'll see in a moment that once you're at a point where you want to test how accurate this is then I'll insert uh, that same scale and I'll double check my calculations or in this case I said that I wanted this room to be 12 feet across so I'll go to the quarter inch scale and I'll check that scale against that blob and then what I'll actually do is I'll adjust the blob to the scale so I come down to 12 feet roughly and then I'll turn that scale off for the minute but um, if I want to then create a uh, begin to create a drafted document above that, I'll again um, this time I'll turn on drawing assist and give you a quick sample of that. So I'm going to again the actions menu, and then to the canvas menu, and then I'm going to activate drawing assist, and that comes on by default uh, as a 2D drawing, sort of a drafting mode, and I'll select my my pen this time and I've got that there and the the trick is here I'll activate drawing assist in the layer itself so with that activated I'll come back out tap out and I can begin just drafting these lines um, so you get the idea that's it in a nutshell and then you can come back and check these things with a scale ruler again so that's the two ways either start with a grid or just uh, you know, start loose and then retroactively scale the document. All right, question number two. In Procreate, can you upload CAD files or hand dimension PDF drawings as a base and then draw furniture over them? Well, you uh, unfortunately, there is no way to upload a CAD file or a PDF to Procreate, but you can upload a JPEG or a screenshot of a plan, then scale it retroactively if you have to. And once it's scaled retroactively, I'll import a uh, FFE template that I've created. I'll show you that right now. Here is a plan, say, that maybe you've all seen before. And I can then import, let me make this a little more visible, by adding a layer of white above this. This is the equivalent of adding a layer of tracing paper over your project. So you can see I'm adjusting the uh, the uh, temporary or the transparency here. And once that's done, 
I can add a new layer and I can import I go to the add menu and that's all showing up for you guys yep and I will insert a file and in this case I'll go back in the iCloud Drive and the iCloud Drive is just indispensable I'm sure you've all discovered that but you will shortly and I'll go to the FF and E templates and I'll import what is an 8th scale template. Now I believe I'm working at a quarter inch below that but the principle will still hold. And let's just grab one of these furniture groupings here and I'll go into rectangular selection mode and let's say maybe this one works or this one. And I'm going to copy and paste. Now what that does is it moves just that item onto its own layer but it still preserves the uh, FFE template that stays intact and that will always be intact in your iCloud Drive anyway so let's come back here now we'll turn this off and we'll deal only with the piece of the FFE that we imported and I'll go to my scale I'll make sure it's in uniform scale so I'm not changing it and I will come up here and substitute this for what I'm what I'm already working on say in freehand but this is a great way to quickly get um, to answer your question to quickly draw furniture without worrying about hand sketching it yourself and getting it in the plan okay let's go to the next question can you show the workaround for using the scale in procreate without the screen cutting it off procreate saves memory save storage space by cutting off anything beyond the picture plane so when you are uh, moving something around you have to be careful that it doesn't fall outside the picture plane or it'll get a cut off and I'll show you an example of that right now so here's the scale it's intact if I move it over here I get all caught up in the flow of things and I change over to a different layer or do some other operation and I start drawing again and then I come back and realize well I need that scale again and I activate it and I bring it back and lo and behold it's cut off the um, scale just like that and you can see this in the menu to the point where we imported the scale so I'll just copy I'll duplicate the scale and I'll keep one as a safe copy we'll call it the safe copy and we'll close out of that. I'll turn it off. And now whatever happens to this scale, I can lose this scale and then try and get it back and realize I did that. And all I have to do is come back here. Maybe I delete this layer and I go back to the save copy and I duplicate it again. Now by contrast, if you uh, do any of this in Morfolio, um, you're going to be able to move that scale around to your heart's content. So let's go with a new blank document in Morfolio Trace and let's see how it handles that issue of uh, retroactively scaling to a drawing which you don't necessarily know the graphic scale but you know the at least one dimension of. All right, we'll go to custom and we'll choose a blank and let's choose the same thing tabloid 11 by 17 so we can print it out later and work with other people around a table. Let's go to quarter inch equals zero and up comes that drawing and now I'm going to import over here from the um, album or the library icon let's import that same drawing that we did in Procreate because it has a scale it has the Procreate scale attached to it so this should be instructive so we're happy with that now we're going to go to the set scale dimension under the wrench settings I'm going to tap here we're going to stretch these tiny little crosshairs to the known dimension and, and if you can see it there that right there is 40 feet so that's gonna that's gonna set the entire thing I'll, I'll even this up just to get as accurate as we can I'll hit the green check before I do that I need to put in that 40 feet so we'll go here 40 feet return approve that scale registered and now when I import a scale to work with that scale comes in 
just at 40 feet right like that and you can double tap on these scales and it'll turn at 90 degrees and help you work that way and more importantly this scale will never disappear because they've written their program in such a way that it can always come back double tap again if your world is uh, de mostly dealing with hard line drawings or drafted drafted shapes uh, that need measurement and you can bring in your triangles and change these angles and um, bring in compasses but we'll get into all that later okay the next one's an easy one where can you buy that screen pencil do you only use one type is this the same pencil or pen you can use for all four apps uh, the answer is yes it's the apple pencil and the apple pencil really was the game changer for me years ago i've never tried any other stylus and um, it wasn't until the ipad or rather procreate came out with uh, apple pencil compatibility that i realized i could safely burn the bridge to my own watercolor career i'll show you briefly the kind of things that i used to do this is the world of watercolors that i came from all done with pencils and paint brushes and painstaking manual labor but it began to feel uh, well it was inefficient to do and it was very difficult to make changes and it began to feel a little dated to me even though I'm so glad I did it that's when I made the uh, transition because the Apple Pencil came out I was able to make the transition to iPad full-time and my first iPad renderings and drawings were absolutely terrible but I stuck with it and you can do the same uh, let's look at the next question uh, I see the latest version of Procreate has a 3D software element would this do the work of Shaper 3D or SketchUp to be honest I can barely keep up with all the features of Procreate as it is but I did just take a look at the new 3D capability and uh, let me show you this video. And I'll include this link uh, in the description below. We'll just watch 10 seconds of the video. First of all, Procreate has not become a 3D modeling software. If you want to create 3D models, you'll still have to use an external app like Nomad Sculpt on iPad or something like Blender on PC, which I used to create the intro that you just saw. Pro now that's an important point. Um, but uh, Procreate will not be able to make 3D models like Shaper 3D. So that's the, that's the direct and simple answer to your question. But as long as you're here, and as long as I've got this video queued up, let's keep looking, because it is kind of amazing. Still a drawing. Essentially what this is allowing you to do is add texture and color and lighting effects to a 3D object that you bring in. Taking a closer look at the material settings, we can see these three properties. We have color, roughness, and metallic. Well, what does that mean? Now, I think what's really interesting is how you set up these lights, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then we're almost done, but we'll just take a look at this. In the lighting menu, we can move. completely customize how we want the scene to be. So those cubes you're looking at right here are your lights, and you can change the color of the light and the intensity of the light, just like you're used to do in, in your brushes. So. I'm just, I'm just blown away by this so ability. Add a light on the subject, no problem. We just tap on add light, and it appears right here. Then we just simply pick it up and move it around wherever we want. We can place up to four of these light boxes in our scene at the same time. Maybe when you're doing a product design or a specific cabinet or something that goes in a house and you really need to sell your client, I can see that. But it's still phenomenal. So I'm so glad this questioner brought it up because it's not going to replace Shaper 3D because it's not like uh, a 3D program. Could you pop up the examples of what Shaper 3D can do? So one of the best videos I found uh, for Shaper 3D is this fellow. It's actually through the Morfolio Trace YouTube channel because Shaper 3D has some integration with Morfolio Trace. So the most important thing, obviously, is that he's working right in a 3D space right from the beginning. So he's drawing in 3D and choosing which plane to draw on, and then he's going to extrude from those planes. A bit of a uh, faster version. Let me see if um, I am not really working with the scale. He's scale. going to speed this up in uh, a second. So let's take a look. Overall geometry of the building, it's not necessarily a floor plan. It's more like a footprint. So from there, it's really cool. I can simply kind of extrude it. Again, you might saw 
some sense of space and proportions. Like I said, I'm not really using the scale. So you get the idea. And then later on, he pulls this into Morfolio Trace. He's going to bring this into Morfolio Trace. He's going to pick a view. He's now yeah, tracing uh, over the uh, ghosted 3D model in the, in the past. Now this is something you can also do, uh, as you all know, you can also do this in um, SketchUp and you can export SketchUp uh, 2D view and um, uh, have the same result. Now there's also uh, an example of somebody uh, doing an incredibly detailed um, tutorial and an interior design. So this is a uh, I have here. very accomplished uh, uh, Shaper 3D user and they are actually creating a almost a CAD-like set of drawings in, in the Shaper 3D. This may be a, a breakthrough for some of you. I'm going to certainly add this to my repertoire for times that I'm away from a computer or a desktop computer. Um, but for me, I'm going to concentrate on uh, designing and sketching with a pencil right now. If you Google Procreate for Architects One Click Tutorial Program Guide, this is a, a PDF that I put together. And if, as you'll see, you, you can just click on these links. You can change all these headings and find the sub find the subject that you want. And then just by clicking these links, you'll go right to that video, and you don't have to go to the website or you don't have to go to the YouTube channel itself and look for the right thing. And I hope to see you all in either the next video or at the UCLA extension class starting January 5th, 2022. Thanks everybody.